Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, we're gonna be taking apart this ACE system, which is spelled incorrectly. It should be called something else. But uh, I'm gonna be ripping this apart and fixing the problem I'm having. If you didn't see my last video, I still can't open this properly. Uh, when you feed filament into this spot, it shoots back up on the inside right here. It just starts spitting it out, which I'm assuming means that the PTFE tubes inside are not connected. And then same thing on slot three. So we're gonna open this thing up, completely void all the warranties and uh, see what we can find. Hopefully uh, there's just some disconnected PTFE tubes or something like that and it's just a simple fix. But getting into this thing's kind of a pain. I read through the wiki earlier uh, and there's quite a bit of screws to take out and hopefully we can get her all back together without any issues. You will need a two and two and a half hex two hex and a 1.5 hex to do this. But before we get into that, uh, I just wanna say thank you to my Patreon members, Everett Hope and Caden O'Weiler. Uh, I thank you guys for being part of my Patreon membership there. And uh, don't forget, you can also check out my YouTube memberships and stuff. And I'm gonna start posting videos early to Patreon and the YouTube members, as well as don't forget, there's an affiliate link down in the description for Protopos if you guys wanna pick out anything up. Uh, Noodle Noob gets you a discount code for 10% off your first order. And then after you do your first order, there's actually a loyalty code they'll give you uh, for 10% off after every time. So just a heads up. So we need to start off by prefacing a couple things. This has not done a successful print connected to the Cobra 3 Breck there. And I'm actually having troubles getting that Cobra 3 connected through Clipper to Orca Slicer. So I might, I'm gonna have to do a little uh, Clipper config on that. but. To start this off, the ACE system has a whole bunch of screws. You're actually gonna have to take off these two feet right here, and they're sticky, and they're over here on the side. I already did that, because I wanted to see how tough they were. And then you have to take off all these on the bottom. Uh, but before I get into that, I'm gonna move you guys to more of an aerial view, and you'll see what I'm doing. Uh, it's just easier, I think, for you guys to do that way, so I don't have to try and keep turning this around to see everything. But uh, I'm gonna get you guys moved, and then we'll get into ripping this thing apart. So. Let's have some fun. All right, so you guys should be in a little bit of a better position. Lighting's adjusted just a little bit to try and reduce the glare as much as I can. Uh, so obviously, if you're gonna do this, you need to have it unplugged from the back here. This needs to be unplugged, disconnected completely uh, for obvious safety reasons. So first thing we're gonna do is actually open this up and we are going to take out these two screws on the side here. There's two of them. I believe these are two and a halfs. I actually don't know what size this bit is. Um, this bit is a 2.0, so that's too small. Let's grab our 2.5. Push that off to the side. This is kind of a how-to, so hopefully this uh, helps some people. And also, if anybody has this problem, they can look it up and hopefully my video can help them figure it out. So once these two screws are taken out, we are going to immediately shut this locket and flip it over but we'll see uh the wiki says you can pull this out but it's kind of a pain <sighs> yeah i'll worry about that later i think i need to get some stuff underneath disconnected first and then i'll worry about that so we're gonna shut this locket flip her over obviously this is probably gonna scratch your ace system if you want to do it on a nicer flat surface i don't particularly care so now we're gonna start with the unbuttoning. And I'm gonna double check that you guys can see everything real quick. All right, you can, I can move this forward a little farther too. Nice. All right. Get that out. These are all plastic tap screws, at least from what I'm feeling so far. Uh, so just a heads up there. Be careful when you're tightening them back up. I'll cover it again before we get there though. And yes, you guys are probably right. I could send this in for warranty and fix it, but I'm not waiting three weeks just for a subpar printer to come back. And I can just fix it myself. I'm not very patient. All right. Now, apparently that's kind of all. You do have to take off these back ones and these are your hex twos. Probably, I think the correct order is actually to do these ones first and then check the other one. But 
we'll just run through this. Beautiful. QC passed. Yeah, right. If you QC passed, you probably wouldn't have had these issues. It's amazing to me. All right. We're just, I'm just popping off these little uh, plastic squares so I don't break them on the back here. They just pop right out. There's nothing holding them in. Uh, they're not special or anything. I just don't want them to get broken or smashed on accident. Uh, is that loose? Wow, that's pathetic. Okay. These are just loose in there. They're not even screwed in. All right. Let's double check all my screws are out. And they are. I was kind of expecting that to move more. but All right. Let's get over to here and see if we can't get this out. Uh, I did not see mention on the wiki about any more screws, but wow, these are kind of difficult to get out. Jeez, man. But you don't have to do this. I just never did this in the beginning, and I want to try and eliminate as many breakable components as possible in case I drop something. Uh, so this is just me being extra precautious. And I see something's attached down there. That's probably the main board. Should be loose enough to come out now. Got to figure out how to get this guy off. Because I know for a fact there's no other screws holding it in. It's just kind of nerve-wracking to... There it is. It's just a little stuck. That's all it is. Realistically, I don't even think you need this. I think you could just leave this off. Like, who cares? There's little LED lights that flash, but I mean... Big whoop. All right, now we're to the guts of this thing. Um, and there was no more mention in the wiki about like undoing more than this. And this should just come out, but it is heavy. Um, it's way heavier than I thought it was gonna be. That's the honest truth there. Wow, she's thick. It's kind of, there's nowhere to grab this stuff either. Come on out of there, you. All right, well, I will be, oh, oh, did we get somewhere? Did we just get somewhere? Come on. All right, everybody. So we're finally able to get this guy out from the shell. And my, oh my, what a mess. That took forever. I'm gonna set the shell on the ground. And we can come back to this. Jeez Louise. All right, so. I'm worried now because all my PTFE tubes were connected without any issues. And this brick right here, I had to end up taking off just because uh, I was just getting in the way. So, when you feed a ferrament in here, no, I'm gonna take off all of these PTFE lockers. I'm gonna cut that off as well. All right. So, we're gonna have to figure out why when I feed fil filament in here, it comes out right here. So it came out in between the rollers. So that means the distance between which What is this? So that means the distance between which this is set underneath and it actually makes contact is too far away. So let's see if we can pull this apart maybe and see if there's something here that we could do to maybe mitigate the problem. Okay, so here's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be able to feed this in here and it's supposed to go through here without any issues and go directly into this spot. But as you can see right here, it will block the filament from going into said spot unless it's right there. And then it allows it to pass right through and go down into the PTFE connector and go straight into the PTFE tube like so. So now I'm curious if there's a very specific way that you're supposed to load filament. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this and we're gonna do a little test. Everything you're about to see from this point on is purely speculative. I am by no means an expert on this, and you should not do what you were about to see. Now that I have that out of the way, we are going to power this up 
and we're going to see how this little thing works to better understand how it works. So, this isn't really enough filament for this, but that's okay. All right, so, ACE system is now on. This live, there's 120 volts right in front of me right here. Actually, it looks like it steps it down to 24? 24, yeah, 24. All right, so we put dinghy in here. Nothing happened to dinghy, it didn't do anything. So does it need to be connected to his apprenta to get something? Or is it currently, no, because I just turned it on, right? I think that might be on. I think the power switch is reversed. Okay, so we're on right now. All right, so if I'm just gonna feed filament in here, it's detecting. Interesting, interesting. Let's go over here. I don't know, let's, let's have you guys watch this again. So that, so the goal is, if you have this on here, like so, and you have it screwed in to the chassis, the goal is you're gonna put this in here lightly, which they might even tell you that, but that is not implied. It's gonna go until it senses something, and right now it's trying to feed filament in, so I'm gonna mimic that. Then it's gonna grab it, and pull it through. So let's see if I can get this as a demonstration for you guys. When you insert the filament, it moves this little thing because so it's feeding filament right now, supposedly. It's gripped it. But when you insert filament, as you just saw multiple times here, it's not doing it right now, I think, because there's nothing to like roll the filament in. But you insert this filament, it moves things around, like right now it thinks there's something there, so it just caught it. I gotta make it do it from scratch. So let's go here. Detects it, bumps it out, rolls the filament through, and grabs it. That's stupid. I much, I would much rather have the automatic filament feed. All right, well there's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so if you're skipping through the video and you got to this point, what's currently going on with this AnyCubic ACE system is what happens, unlike the Bamboo Lab AMS, where when you feed filament in, there's, a, there's basically a separate extruder that just grabs it and starts pulling it. This uses this roller type selector switch. I don't even know if there's a switch in there. There's, I, I don't know, but it uses these little bearings to grab the filament. So you'll see as I insert the filament, this piece right here will start to spin backwards. So it spun backwards, it hit, it's like, okay, feed the filament in. And so there's a thing right there, like if this was, if I had a spool here, it would feed it in. And I could probably just grab a spool really quick and show you. So what you would do, if you had this piece on, is you'd feed it in, it detects it, it kicks it out. Well, I can't say that worked. Well, this is working great. So you can kind of already see the issue I'm having here. Do I have to hold it here and like wait for it to do that? I don't understand, do you just... Hmm. What makes that terrible clicking noise? Here, let's try it with this piece on. I'm trying to understand how this works. Like, how can it be so terrible?
Uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words, if I'm being honest with you. Like, how terribly can you design a system? It shouldn't be that difficult to feed filament into this. What's all this extra BS? Like, you should just be able to have a gear that grabs it and pulls it in, and you wouldn't need this weird... I mean, this almost looks like, like, a, like a camshaft. I'm utterly dumbstruck right now. Like, I can't believe somebody thought this was, like, good. And I was hoping this would be simple. I didn't understand. Okay, I'm gonna hold this here and be like, okay. Weird. Okay, well, I'm done. I'm gonna put this thing back together and uh, put the PDF YouTubers back on. And uh, I will be back when I'm done and explain how disappointed I am. All right, so I hooked all this back up together. I fed some filament in, I got it loaded. If you wanna feed filament into this thing, it is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Uh, you have to watch it, because if it misses, it'll slip, and then it'll feed filament out the same exact way. So you can't force the filament in, you have to like gently feed it. Uh, so that's something different from the Bamboo Lab machine. I'm currently printing a speed benchy, so I'm gonna let it do its leveling and all that stuff and uh, see if I can get a successful first print out of this thing. But uh, this A system in my eyes is a total waste of space. Um, I'm gonna try to do some pretty advanced multicolor prints, you know, somewhere in that 500 to 1000 color change amount, probably around 700 is where I'll shoot for. And uh, see if it can come out okay at the end and then I might change my opinion but as of right now this is a waste of space um, I can tell you right now getting into this thing is an astronomical pain and anybody who's going to need to do maintenance on this is going to have a hell of a time uh, PTFE tubes in this because the angle at which they're pinched underneath the angle of like degree that they're bent at I give it maybe 500 at print hours on the AMS system here before uh, you need to replace those and replacing them is not simple you have to take out that entire base plate which is 12 screws 6, 7, 8, 9 so 10 screws 11, 12 I made it now 14 screws that you're going to have to replace or remove just to get into this thing to replace the PTFE tubes and there's nothing in the bottom of this that really holds them in place so they're floating down there hopefully they're not getting crushed by anything and I mean the AMS is like that too but there's so much room and there's not enough there's no weight to the AMS um, I know this has a drying feature on it but still that's absurd to me um, I'm hoping that I can change my opinion about this but so far I, I haven't even been able to get this machine to click connect to clipper or not to connect but like I haven't been able to even pull it up with mainsail or anything, so I don't know what the Clipper Configs currently ran at, but uh, wirelessly printing to this, unless you want to use any Cubist proprietary thing, is so far uh, not possible for me, and I might have to go in and adjust some settings and make that possible, but yeah, that's a little discouraging there. But all in all, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you learned something about this Ace Pro system that's spelled with not the correct letters. Yeah, I wish I had better things to say, but I think the mechanism, that camshaft in there, whatever that collects the fill, is that's so stupid to me. Uh, I don't see why you would do it that way, because it leads to failure, and I don't like when things purposely lead to failure because they're designed improperly. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the description for some cool stuff, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.